Good evening, everybody. We're coming to you live from Thompson Bowling Arena for the initial Ramey and Rob Instant Reaction Pod. Tennessee takes down Tennessee Tech tonight and kind of a ho-hum opening night. Grant, biggest takeaways? They're going to shoot the basketball a ton. I think they shot it 44 times from the three-point line. I think they shot it 40 last year in the season opener against UT Martin. Didn't go so well in the first half. I think they missed nine straight at one point where, where Tennessee Tech went on that little 8-0 run and I think they cut it to six, but it looked more like them in the second half hitting open shots. I don't think there was any problem with the shots they took in the first half. They just couldn't make a shot. They were open. The Tennessee Tech was packing it in and giving them those shots. They just couldn't knock one down. But I think in the second half, um, you saw a little bit more what you would expect from the Tennessee basketball team. I thought Tyreek Key continues to be that guy that just fills it up and scores a ton. And right now it's kind of hard to imagine where this team would be without him, even though he kind of flew under the radar in the transfer portal. So... It looks like they got a steal there, and, and some other guys kind of just did their regular stuff, and it was good to see Josiah Jordan-James uh, come back after the offseason knee scope and, and sitting out most of the, of the preseason. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. 44 three-point attempts. It's, it's kind of jumps out of the box for her. But we just got done talking to Coach Barnes, and, I mean, he seemed to have zero problem with any of those shots. And there's not going to be a lot of nights where Zakai goes 2 of 12 on – Pretty much, I mean, I don't know that he took one with a hand in his face, and pretty much the, the same for for all of them. And and I echo what you said about Josiah. That's one that I think everybody's been keeping their eye on. Uh, they've been handling him with kid gloves, and um, you know he might have been a little rusty tonight, but he didn't. He certainly looked like did not look like he was having any issues with his knee. And on on the subject of Tyreek Key, I mean, I know we're all going to talk about it and write about it. I mean, I, I thought he was going to be a big addition, but. I, I, I definitely underestimated it back in April or May or whenever it happened from what we've seen against Gonzaga and tonight. And he it's, it's his mentality, too. I think he's the veteran presence on this team. Uh, not that they're short of any veterans, but he has that Indiana State grad transfer, in-state kid kind of veteran. He doesn't really care. He just wants to do his thing off the bench. He wants to play whatever role uh, this team asks of him. And right now it's to be the scorer, to the guy that comes in and brings a little bit of a – uh, spark off the bench with his scoring ability and he can score it at all three levels we've seen it he, it happened in the preseason it's happening now uh, in the first game and those 44 threes I mean Olivier Kamala is a good player Jonas Adu is a good player Uros Plavsic has looked good at times I mean it's but you're not going to rely on those guys night in and night out when you have Josiah when you have Santi when you have uh, Tyreek when you have Zakai at point guard I mean those are guys you're going to lean on every single night and and I think their strength is the three-point line and there's that they talked about it in post game that four point line in Pratt Pavilion. It's just blue tape on the ground, but it's about two feet past where the NBA line is, and they spent the entire off season shooting it from that distance. So I think they're trying to expand their range as much as they can. They have been for the last few months, and I think you're going to continue to see that uh, early on throughout the whole season, I guess. Yeah, and if we were just talking in, in April about them bringing back Zakai, bringing back Santi, bringing back Josiah, I'd argue that. As far as starters, that might be the best backcourt in the SEC. I mean, certainly the coaches named two of those guys first team, and, and Josiah was, was named second team. And then you throw Tyreek Key into the mix. If you know, if I had a betting pool right now, I'd take Tyreek Key to lead the team in scoring. I would too, and you just really didn't know what you were going to expect out of him. He scored it a ton at Indiana State and at, at Clay County in high school. He was known as a scorer, somebody who scored it a ton. But missing all of last year with a shoulder injury, he hadn't played since the COVID season. And what a weird kind of crazy season that was for everybody in college basketball. It didn't just, just didn't feel like a normal college basketball season. So you, it's been a while since he's seen a normal arena, um, a normal game competition. Um, and you never know with a shoulder, with a shooter. I mean, we saw it with Lamonte Turner. He had that shoulder issue, and he was never really the same at a certain point uh, dealing with that. But it looks like he's Tyreek has come back from that shoulder issue. Looks like he's the scorer that he was billed to be uh, a long time ago. What do you think about the rotation, Grant? I was a little – I mean, I wasn't stunned, and, it, and it's Tennessee Tech, so it could change. But it seemed like Rick opened the season pretty intent on playing nine guys, which is roughly one more than we normally see in most years, at least for guys that have defined roles. I mean, you know, you might have a ninth guy that, that comes in and plays plays with foul trouble or something. But, you know, he had his starting five. I, th I think, you know, Josiah came off the bench tonight. I think that's going to be sh temporary just with him right. coming back. But then um, Jonas I, I do. Jamai Meshack were two guys who wasn't sure, you know, what their role would be, but just simply based off one game, seems like that they're part of the plan. I think they're definitely part of the plan. I think Jamai was some of the minutes he had tonight were some of the most impressive minutes we've seen from him 
in, in his short, obviously, Tennessee career here. Um, B.J. Edwards is a guy that I don't think he's ready right now. Uh, you saw it in Gonz- the Gonzaga exhibition. He got off the bench for the last couple minutes. You saw it again against Tennessee Tech. Um, it feels like Jemai has passed him up pretty substantially in the in the rotation. Uh, Tobey Owaka, I don't know how many minutes he's going to get, but maybe he's a guy that can help them a little bit off the bench uh, in the front court. But, yeah, it seems like it's it's 8-9 at least right now, if not more, moving forward. Uh, DJ Jefferson, Barnes said in postgame, he's going to red shirt, so you're not going to see him. Um, but he's, he's playing a lot of players, and uh, if you can establish that early, if they can give you something, I don't see why you don't just keep rolling with it. And, and last thing for me, and we, we've seen enough of these five-star one-and-done freshmen to where I don't expect – Zion Williams and Anthony Davis. I mean, those guys are, are super rare. Julian Phillips didn't put up huge numbers tonight. He had eight points, you know, um, grabbed three rebounds, had three assists. But what what impresses me about him, Grant, is he is he's perhaps the most self confident of any of those kids that have come through there like that. I mean, he's not, you know, I don't know that they've all been this way, but it doesn't look like he's looking over his shoulder. He, if he's got a shot, he's going to take it. And, and he's not not remotely selfish by any means, but he's aggressive and is, is just going to play his game, I mean, from the, from the start. Well, three weeks ago they had an open practice at the arena uh, before the Alabama football game, I think, and, and Julian struggled pretty badly in the first half. The second half he looked like a lottery pick. And then against Gonzaga he looked pretty bad in the first half. He looked like a freshman. And then the, the start of the second half, Rick drew up a play for him. He scored, and I think he scored 12 points in the second half. Uh, against Gonzaga, and he looked great again. And I think, the, I think the moral of the story here: he's going to get his eventually. I think he's got to get more, a little bit more consistent. But yeah, the confidence is there. The the length, the size, the athleticism. Uh, he's got a ton of it. I think he's going to be a really good basketball player. I think he's just got to establish a little bit of consistency uh, and get going. And I think he's going to be great. Yeah, do not disagree. So tons of coverage up on up on the site right now for my opening night with Tennessee's 75-42 win over Tennessee Tech. He's Grant Ramey. I'm Rob Lewis. We'll, there'll be much more to come as the season progresses.